Podcast. Hi everyone, it's Sonia here. So um, in case you didn't know, we've been having riots here in Montreal. I want to give you uh, the lowdown on that and also give you the info on where the next one's going to be. Like, just so you're informed, not saying you should go away. Um, also, I just want to let you know, I pretty much feel like crap right now. I've my body hurts. Um, I know old lady talking about <laughs> her healthier, but I got to tell you in case my energy seems a little bit low, like I think I jammed myself up by editing too much and I, I probably shouldn't be doing this right now, but Hey, look, I got my terminal zapper here. I'm hoping that's going to help. I got myself propped up on my knee, so hopefully this won't do any more damage. But anyway, this stuff is really important. You guys need to know what's going on. Cause what happened was our premier here, Francois Legault, decided that we should have um, a, a, an earlier curfew. I mean, hey, you know, like these outbreaks are happening in the manufacturing and processing plants. Uh, people who don't have sick days, paid sick days, so they, they come into work sick. And uh, and then they go home where they live in multi-generational uh, family units and they spread it around the community. Uh, so, but rather than, you know, make sure that those people can take time off when they're sick, hey, let's move the curfew back. <laughs> This curfew that, well, who knows what the science is, but whatever. At least it looks like we're doing something, right? So people actually got really pissed off about this and um, had some riots. Um, also, if you like the video, by the way, please hit like for me. And thanks for leaving me a comment. Thank you for your support on Patreon. That keeps my channel going. And where's my pouch? I'm going to just tell you one more time. I still have these pouches available. These literally eliminate odors not kidding they will remove your pet odors even the smell of tobacco if you got some stale tobacco whatever it is these things just eliminate odors by removing viruses bacteria fungus and mold and pretty much whatever else is smelly and it's 15 percent off no shipping and handling if you use the link below so please check it out so okay i'm gonna show you here what happened in montreal in case you don't know um let me just get my screen capture working i am not going to edit i I promise myself as awkward as it gets here tonight because it, it does because I ramble a lot and stuff and things, you know, but as awkward as it gets, I promise myself I'm not going to edit because usually I edit like crazy and then I suffer. So not tonight. OK, so I'm just waiting for this to start. And I guess it's up and running. So, OK, third night. Whoops, that's started off on the wrong foot. Not going to edit. OK, so this is where it started. Cult Montreal reported, uh, watch scenes from the anti-curfew protests in Old Montreal tonight. So this was last Sunday, April 11th. Um, I had heard about this, actually. My friend recommended that I go and do some uh, journalism, but I, I couldn't make it. Uh, apparently, this was, uh, I could be wrong, but from what I heard, it was organized by Chris Skye. In case you don't know, he'd been pretty popular on Instagram. He'd been going around, you know, at airports telling people you don't have to take the test. You don't have to, um, do the hotel quarantine. And if they give you a fine, it won't hold up in court. So he was basically telling people they don't have to like follow the guidelines and restrictions. And if they get fines, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay it, which I don't know if, the, if it's true about the fines. Um, so he, he's been, you know, telling people, uh, things, and I uh, was involved with this. Now, just to let you know, this guy, Chris Sky, has now been deplatformed, although that's apparently not stopping him. He just opened a website, but he's been deplatformed off wherever he was on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but he's also been put on a no fly list, which is pretty heavy. I thought no fly lists were for, you know, um, I don't want to say the T word, but you guys know, I mean, I'm not really sure like how this guy ends up on a no fly list. I mean, how is he, how is he going to be a threat on an airplane? But that is how they decided to punish him. So that's pretty heavy. Anyway, scenes from the protest that I did not make it to. So it, it was in old Montreal and basically it was, um, a lot of young people. I'll show you some of this footage, but I'll just turn the sound down. A lot of young people showed up they They're really, really fed up. Look, it was a huge crowd. Quite a big crowd. And then what happened was, um, well, yes, obviously the, um, the, the riot police did show up. But what the protesters did, I think they show you a bit here. Oh, they, a fire has been started. They started a, a big fire. You should really check out this website if you want to see all the coverage. 
you know, they started a bonfire. It's, they didn't light buildings on fire or anything, but they see they started this big ass bonfire right here. Uh, I threw some fireworks in it, and then the riot police came in, and things actually escalated. Let's see, is this one? Okay, so there's the fire. Um, what happened? Here's what happened. They started to um, they started to smash. Whoa. E right through the window. I actually feel really bad for those store owners because they've suffered a lot already because of all the restrictions. And now look, these kids were trashing the place. I mean, they're really angry, you know. Although there are there are certain people here in Montreal who will just join these kind of events just so they get to do that kind of stuff. Um, more smashing, smashing of windows. So there was quite a lot of like rioting and looting, and. Look at this. They they hijacked a bus. Actually, not just one bus. But from what I understand, they hijacked three buses. Well, hijacked. I mean, maybe I shouldn't use that word, but they like took command of three um city buses. Here's the guy in the bus. It's like they're just going completely um completely haywire. So that was the first night, um, and then it didn't it didn't stop. Actually, the next night they had another one of these protests downtown, which is where I live. And actually, I could have gone down there as a journalist, you know, and uh, reported on it, but I I didn't even know what was happening. <laughs> see, see now normally I would edit that out, but I promise no editing. But this is the truth. I, I it's hard to know where these things are going to be, you know. So, I. I should have taken a hint because people were setting off fireworks. I saw the fireworks and I was like, oh, they're protesting somewhere, but I didn't know where. Turns out it was like down the street from me. Uh, but anyhow, it wasn't, uh, I think, that big of a deal the second night, but they did arrest a whole bunch of people. Let's see if there's any more footage. Well, no, they, what did they do? Oh, they're, the riot squad was deployed. That was in old Montreal. Uh, 24 hours later, police made sure an encore performance would not materialize. So there were bike squads. Um, and I don't really think it was a big deal the second night. And the third night, they actually did it a third night. And listen, they're not done yet. Montreal has protests and riots brewing. But the third night, as they say here, anti-curfew protests quickly broken up. Quiet third night of protests. Third curfew protests planned in Quebec. So that was, oh, they... Yeah, so they, they these been going on. Um, what I heard about the third one, I think it was like in front of the Eaton Center or one of these malls downtown. Apparently, people didn't even know and like where exactly it was going to be. There weren't a lot of people, and uh, they they like came up and asked uh, the journalist uh, if they if he knew where the protest was going to be. But anyhow, it was really small. It got broken up, but like I said, it's not over. Um, okay, here is. The update on what's coming um, from Cult Montreal. I'm kind of really amazed that this is even up because usually they really try to make sure that we don't know what's going to happen so that we can't be there. A pro science anti curfew protest is happening in Montreal on Sunday. I think they are saying pro science, as in, please show us the scientific proof because so far there isn't really any that a curfew serves any purpose. Like, this is why the curfew is such, you know, an aggravating issue here because there could be some proof that distancing or any of these things, like there have been some studies on these things, but there's there's no evidence whatsoever about a curfew. And on top of that, not only to have a curfew, we're the only people, the only place in North America that has one, but to then, you know, deal with a third wave which, like, yes, the cases and the hospitalizations are up, okay? But not, 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 not only to have the curfew, but to deal with the third wave by moving it back an hour and a half. Like, how does that make any sense? You know, like, the virus really doesn't care what time it is. You know, <clears throat> it's going to give somebody the COVID at 8 o'clock, just like it's going to give somebody the COVID at 9.30. Oh, it's still going to give you the COVID. Oh, my God, the curfew. We need the curfew. Uh, there's like a running joke here that the real reason that the curfew is at 8 o'clock is because that's when the bats come out. And as we all know, the bats carry the COVID. So get back in the house. 
No, I don't think the curve is really going to do much, going to make much difference. Anyhow, um, it's really driving people crazy because, you know, young people have a lot of energy. Obviously, they don't want to be cooped up even more. Uh, people want to go out for a walk in the evening. I mean, and it's just the fact that our government is being like this, you know, it, it's it's not even about like, well, why do you want to go after eight o'clock? Well, why does the government want to do this? You know, like what gives them the right? Anyway, manifestation large contre le couvre-feu. Manifestation is how we say uh, a protest in Quebec, which is kind of funny because when I upload things and, and I write manifestation on it, they always like send me to the like, um, like manifestation, you know, law of attraction. Like they always like link me with those things, but it's got nothing to do with it. Mass protest against the curfew. So this is going to be this Sunday, which is tomorrow. Although maybe I'll be uploading this tomorrow, which means it's today. Anyway, Sunday, April 18th, 5.30 p.m. Wow, that's really early. That's like, uh-oh, my son just said a bad word, but I promised you I wasn't going to edit this time. He's playing video games. Anyway, um, 5.30 p.m. at Jean Mas Park. So that's at Place des Arts Metro. Pro-mask, anti-police state. Okay, that that's kind of like really surprising, like, because usually the protests, they were in favor of a relaxation of all the sanitary measures. This is the first time I've seen a protest advertised as being pro-mask. But, you know, anyway, anti-police state. Well, at least, you know, like they're making it about one thing. They're saying pro-science. We're not against science. We're not against, you know, having to have sanitary measures and, and do things to help the situation. But we're against the police state. And I agree with that. And I think that there's this whole political agenda going on here in Quebec. I mean, Francois Legault has promised us that if we do all this stuff, uh, we're going to be free for the 24th of June for La Saint-Jean-Baptiste, which is the national holiday of Quebec, like national as in, you know, we're a country, right? Um, as opposed to a province, you know? So it's like, it stirs up a lot of uh, patriotic, nationalistic sentiment in people that, yes, we're going to really give it a push because he's, he keeps telling people, like, just keep it up a little longer. Just keep pushing. I'm just asking you to make another effort, a little bit more effort. And I think by adding the patriotism of Saint-Jean to it, it's going to, like, make people feel like, you know, oui, je vais faire ça pour le Québec. On va s'en sortir. Ça va bien aller. Because people are really tired at this point. They don't feel like ça va bien aller du tout. Uh, you know, they feel like um, ça, va, ça va mal, you know. So um, I, I think he's throwing, he's trying, they're, they're starting to throw like propaganda techniques usual, using, you know, uh, patriotism. And the same, Biden is doing the same thing with promising you you'll be free for July 4th. I mean, why? The virus is like, oh, oh it's the 4th of July. I, I better go hide somewhere. Oh my God, I can't give people the COVID anymore because it's Independence Day. They beat me. Okay, I'm out. You know, the virus doesn't care what day it is. This is going to be over when it's over. And I don't believe them anymore. When they say it's for the 24th, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard it all before. It's going to be for the 24th. 24th will come. And then they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. We have a fourth wave. Oh, I'm sorry. We have an Indian variant. We have this. We have that. So I'm not getting my hopes up. But like, that's what he's saying. So anyway, heads up. We've been having a lot of protests. Well, we had one big one. That was a riot. So I'm kind of surprised that it, it took a whole year, you know, for people to get to that point. Because some people are very, very frustrated and angry and they have a lot of energy that they need to expend somewhere. Um, and then we had two quiet ones. And I think this one's going to be pretty big and it's going to be at 530. So, oh, man, and I'm taking my son to the park tomorrow. Um, yeah, well, you know, family comes first, right? But I'm going to really try to make sure to get down there. So maybe I can give you some live coverage. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up with that. <laughs> you guys, a lot of stuff is going on all the time and I, I want to give you updates and I've got so much going on in my life. Like I'm a mom, you know, and I have day job and I go see my mom who, by the way, a lot of you've been asking, she's doing okay. Like her language is not very good, but her spirits are, are high. She has a, a great sense of humor even now, even though she can't even express herself. Right. Um, like today, I, as I was leaving, I was taking off my blue gown because the nurse said to me, don't forget to take off your gown. And I was like, yeah, I always forget. And then I made the excuses for myself like, oh, I forget because, you know, like I forget that I'm wearing it because I'm not really focused on it. And then I forget until I'm out. And then I realize, oh, I'm in the gown. And my mother goes, 
in German, eh? She goes, nah, you're just getting old. You know, so like, bless her heart. She still totally has that spark and that, that spirit. She's a pretty cool person. Even if she doesn't talk very well at all anymore. But thanks for your concern. I will do an update. I'm going to, I'm going to do an update so you can see how she's been. She's, she's still a lot of fun. And she just had her 86th birthday on the 14th, by the way, which was also my birthday. So yeah, we had a birthday together. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's it. I wanted to give you a heads up. And um, don't forget to like the video. And thanks again for your support. Um, thanks for checking out the link. These things really are amazing. They, they can do so many things. And um, yeah, you know, thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.